Hello and welcome to RGU Talk, the official podcast of Robert Gordon University. I'm your host, Johnny Milne, and I'm delighted to welcome to the show student ambassador and architecture student, Liam Adams. Liam, thank you for joining me. Hi, Johnny. Thanks for having me. Now, so you're studying architecture here at RGU. Uh, What stage are you at and how are you enjoying it so far? So I'm coming out to the end of my second year in university, and so far, I must admit, it's been a bit of a challenge, but certainly a good one. It's been a great experience for me. It's Certainly, it's never something I see myself doing way back when I started. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's yeah, it's been good challenge, but definitely worth it. Hopefully, and I mean, going back, can you tell me a bit about your time at school? It was St Macker Academy, is that right? Yeah, it was. So I was at Macker from two thousand eight, I think I started, which seems a while ago now. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. <laughs> um, so for me, I was just kind of two guys. I came. I didn't really know what I expected to gain out of it. It mm-hmm. was just uh, it was the local school for me. It's where I'd grown up ever since primary school as well. So I just kind of like, experienced what I could, took it in as many courses I could, and just kind of wanted to see where it went. And I mean, back when you were at school, what ambitions did you have for when you grew up? Did you know that you'd be wanting to come and do architecture? And no, not originally. Um, with most of my family, we didn't end up. None of us had went to university before, so I didn't really okay. know what to expect. And with being in Aberdeen, I think oil and any kind of apprenticeship in that direction was what we yeah, kind of expected. <laughs> um, so when did you first come into contact with RGU? So it was during probably the fifth year or sixth year applicant day, open days and things like that. So it was a good chance to like see the campuses. Obviously, Aberdeen was my local just down the road. So I went <laughs> yeah. to a lot more of those. It was more accessible for the school. But I did come to a couple of open days um, in the, I think it was the engineering at first. Okay. Um, now you took part in the access program. Uh, so getting first-hand experience of student life and degree courses when you're still at school. What was that experience like? And can you tell anyone what was involved? So for me, I came, my guidance teacher recommended me to it and said it might be something you'd be interested in with the course I was taking. It was by Graph Common English back at the time, and okay. I wasn't too sure if engineering was going to be for me. So they gave, gave me the opportunity to come to the campus on a more regular basis and kind of experience architecture, which wasn't something I'd originally considered. And back when I did it, there wasn't actually student ambassadors involved with it. It was just lecture-based, so okay. it, was, it was quite objective from that point of view. But it, I think having a student ambassador now is certainly more benefit to it. So overall, it gave an idea of what was in the course, what was kind of expected of us, and just kind of what university life was like in general. So did, does anything, did anything stand out to you at the time that, you know, this is, what was it made you think, this is what I want to do um, when I leave school? I think it was just a different experience. It wasn't quite as math-based as engineering would have been. <laughs> go, and oil is quite, um, like obviously, a term oil now in it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just, just slightly different. It was more hands-on with model making, things like that, slightly more artsy. It was just... It was a chance to like, made, um, change Aberdeen, hopefully, in the, in the long run. Obviously, Aberdeen's kind of lacking in that so in, in architecture in general. Mm-hmm. So I thought, I kind of see myself as, if it's an opportunity to, to make my city a better place, then I'd love to grab it with both hands. Oh, so you left school after doing the access course. What was next for you after that? So I, ironically, I did end up working in an oil apprenticeship oh. for a year, <laughs> <laughs> just to kind of make sure that I, I'd test both sides of the water, really. Mm-hmm. I'd experienced what architecture was, was going to be like for me, and I always had the option to come back and do that. Or I, So I wanted to see what the other um, side of that would be. So I did an oil apprenticeship for a year using CAD and programs that actually benefited me when I came back to university. And after that, I worked in, I, after oil, oil went downhill, I ended up going into a structural, structural firm for doing a similar apprenticeship. Okay. And that brought me back into the built environment world and recaptured that passion for me of like, architecture might, be the right, might have been the right choice in the first place. So what made you decide to, once you, to leave the world of work and to come study at RGU? Well, having the past experience of ASIS and knowing it'd be quite a, a hospitable place for me, it'd be a good experience. And I always had that in the back of my head anyway. Mm-hmm. And with my new experience in the structural engineering world and built environment world, I, was, I kind of thought, why just do the structural side when I can actually have a choice in what's being designed and what would be held up in the first place? So I think that early experience was always stuck with me, always resonated with me before moving back, moving into the world of work. And it was always there. So when the opportunity came and the... Obviously, the pay in going structural engineering wasn't quite as good as when I'd went oil. Oh, yeah. So I've seen all, all these kind of factors came in. But certainly, ACES was always something that had stuck with me and always added in the back of my mind. So I knew it was something I wanted to go back and do. And after being a student for a while, you obviously became a student ambassador, um, meaning you support the programs that you used to study when you were coming up. How have you, well, first of all, how did that come about and how have you found it? 
And well, it came about in for the end of first year emails were sent out. And I seen, I remember doing the program and thinking that would have been a great opportunity. It's something I'm very passionate about is wider access. Mm. Obviously, my circumstances um, kind of have, like stuck with me with that. And so being able to help out similar schools was always something I was keen on. Um, so I had a successful interview after the summer and I started back in September. So that was involved. I've been involved with a wide range of programs from the Northern Lights, Aspire North and Access to being the main one from the first semester. And so it was a good opportunity to work with um, our partnership schools. I think there's seven total. Mm -hmm. And having them, um, seeing their experience and kind of grow and um, figure out their interests and how, like, how I can help them as well, I guess, give them an insight into student life. Obviously, they're still in the formative years of their career. They're still trying to decide what they want to do. But I will make sure what they're doing is the right for them. So I try to make myself as approachable as possible for the students. Um, and wh which courses, well, which of the programs, sorry, has stood out to you as the most exciting one to help out with so far? Well, so far, architecture, the architecture one for me, yeah, because it was what I was passionate about. And all the kids that came to that specifically were quite interested. But across the school, I think there's, is it 12 programs in total that are involved it's, I with think it? it's around that, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so I've been also been involved with the media one with Aspire North, and that was quite mm. a good bit of fun. I can understand why the students might be interested in that. It's not probably something students wouldn't consider because I don't think schools offer a huge approach into it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's kind of a like a fun way to get started and start them thinking about what other options there might be and opening their mind to what the the whole university offers, I guess. And has there been any other uh, activities you've taken part as that really stood out as part of your time as ambassador? Certainly things that might make other students want to. Uh, apply themselves and for me it's so wide-ranging I've well, obviously being part of the ACES program where you're working with school students and they're the kind of art that's your passion but I think if the, if your course often and there's a chance to do it, I would definitely grasp it it's a chance to give back to younger students and some students might have been like been through one course and found out it was not for them so it's a chance for them to give back to those students as well who might not know what they want to do mm -hmm. and make sure those students make the right decision and you mentioned the partner schools that the university works with do you think that Coming from one of RGU's partner schools and your time on the uh, ACES program has helped you settle in and kind of feel familiar with life at RGU and university life. Yeah, definitely. When I first came into the university, I kind of knew where I was going straight away. I kind of had a grasp of the campus in general, so it wasn't like this whole scary lock place I was locked out of. It was quite an open approach and quite warming. Yeah. And I'd met some lecturers who are still in the course now who I've actually just had a meeting with the other day to have us speak about my coursework and things and get help with. And find, seeing the lecturers from so early on being so opening and so help, willing to help, I think kind of made it a much more desirable place for me to be. I knew what I was coming into. So if there's a chance for stu future students to get onto the course as well, I would definitely recommend it. It certainly makes it a more like approachable place than you'd actually th might think in the first place. And throughout your course so far, what stood out to you is the the most fun you've had so far, the best project you've taken part in? So far, those studios kind of are where architecture students may spend most of their time. Any of my fellow students will definitely vouch for that. <laughs> and for me, the kind of model making is quite a fun process. It's a chance to just kind of openly decide, like play about with ideas that you might not get. Like when you go into the world of work, obviously you're a bit more time free right now. Mm -hmm. So you get the chance to just experiment and have fun and like without a kind of a cost budget so much in your first year, especially. There's just a chance to experiment and play about with and like gain a kind of idea of what you'd want to do. Okay. Uh, and finally, what are your future plans once your time here at RGU comes to an end? So I'm not due to finish until, I've got, we are in a six year course, so I'm not due to finish until I think it's 20, 20, 2024 or something. Along Quite some time, right? Yeah. So after that, I would obviously I need to, I would like to become a recognised architect, get my qualifications for a further couple of years for um, being able to call yourself an architect. And mm -hmm. then after that, I would love to start my own firm. Certainly something I've never seen myself doing back when I was in school and owning my own company. But mm -hmm. now that that I'm in the world, like I've had the big work experience and I've had the course experience. It's something I definitely is my long term aim. And do you think you're, what you're studying on the course is really kind of, will help propel you to that? Yeah, hopefully. The whole, the whole idea with RGU in general, I think, is getting people into the world of work. The employment rate's always been quite high. So I think all the courses are oriented towards that anyway. So obviously with the right experience and obviously attaining my final grades will be a big part of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, Liam, thank you so much for your time today and best of luck with the rest of your studies. Thank you for having me. And that's it for another edition of RGU Talk. On behalf of the university, I've been Johnny Milne, and we'll talk to you later.